Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude our study of Galatians chapter 5 verses 24 through 26. Do you belong to Jesus Christ? This is part two of two. That's because if you get right on it, then you don't have to beat them to death later on until they turn into teenagers. Then it's all off. <laughs> I'm just saying. But it was in between years, man, it was good. It was good. Yeah. Well, that's the Christian. You're still, Mariah was still my baby when I whopped her on the diaper and when I threatened her at Frisch's. She was still my baby. And that's the way you are with God. You're still His child. But He loves you enough to whop you on the rear end. Amen. He loves you enough to say, I'm going to take you outside. Because He loves you. Amen. And the parent that won't do that don't really love that child the way they say. Amen. And that's why we're regularly admonished with verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. You see, you can be saved and not be living in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit. We're alive by the Spirit. That's what being born again is all about. Amen. But if we live in the Spirit, let us all... In other words, they go together. You can't say, I'm in the Spirit. I'm walk You've got to be walking in the Spirit. The only way to walk in the Spirit is to live in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. These words that I speak, they are Spirit in their life. You cannot walk in the Spirit unless you're in that book. Amen. And by all things, with prayer and supplication... You have to be a man or woman of prayer in that book. And that's how you then just walk in what you read and walk in the power God gives you. Amen. Living in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit. Amen. What's it mean, walk in the Spirit? One of my favorite passages Amen. is Romans 12, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words... Jesus, the mercies of God is that Jesus died for you. Amen. Jesus paid for your sins. Amen. It's only by God's mercy that you can be saved. Amen. If it weren't for God's mercy, we deserve eternal damnation. Amen. Amen. Now, it's only reasonable in light of that that we present our bodies, meaning everything, everything in it, everything about our bodies, everything inside it. Right. We present it wholly acceptable unto God. That's a reasonable service. Then verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world. Oh, that's the problem. That's the big problem with today's Christians. Amen. Conforming to the world. Yes. Got to be loved by the world. Want everybody to love you. If you were Christ like, everybody would love you. No, they killed him. Amen. If everybody loves you, Jesus says, Woe unto the. You, woe unto them when all men speak well of you. Amen. Woe unto you. It's not a good thing when the whole world loves you. Now when you get into the kingdom and you're in the millennium, that would be a different story. Amen. Amen. But in this dispensation you're living in right now, it's ugly. And Be not conformed to this world, but what? Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And if you're not in that book, you're not renewing your mind. The only way to renew your mind is with the Word of God. I like good gospel music. Most of the time I like a banjo in it. Amen? But uh, I, people... Laugh because they come by. Can listen, this morning you walked in. and We were listening to German march music. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm very what they call eclectic in my musical taste. Last night I was studied, doing some finishing touches on the study, and I had uh, uh, Handel's Messiah. And uh, you talk about hoity-toity, <laughs> <laughs> but man, it's it's Bible. Yeah. I mean, there's a few little doctrinal things in there. But, I mean, it's all about the Bible, all about Jesus and from his, his, the prophecies to His second coming. The whole thing. Yeah. And, um, and you come to my house certain times, you'll hear Bach and Beethoven and all that, you know. It, but what am I doing? I, I'm just I'm trying to listen to things that are not in violation of my conscience and the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Alright, but that's not how... We re renew your mind. 
You, can li you ought to listen to good music, but that's not going to renew your mind. Right. It can make you feel good. It can, it can pick you up a little bit, you know, emotionally and all that, but it's not going to renew your mind. Right. A lot of people I know, the Christians, they, they chase gospel groups all over the place. Right. Go to all the gospel sayings. Fine. If you're in the Word and you're preaching the gospel and you're a man of woman of prayer and you want to go to those things, fine. But if that's all you're doing, it's nothing. That's right. Amen. It's nothing. Renew your mind. It's the good, and it, so that you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And people, I don't know the will of God. Well, you know, get in the Word and pray and start asking Him to show you. And it's amazing how He'll show you. But I'll tell you one thing, it'll very rarely come through a preacher's mouth. The will of God for your life is not going to come from the preacher. Sadly, a lot of people, that's what they want in a preacher. They want him to tell everybody every move to make. Look around and say, um, John, uh, trim the mustache a little bit there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Doc, look better with a suit coat with that tie. Uh, Dan, Cincinnati Reds. Um, you know what I'm saying? And there's some people, they want a preacher to stand up there and tell them every move to make like that. Yeah. Now, don't take me wrong, there's nothing wrong, and I don't want Janie to think I'm preaching to her right now. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know, what do you think about, you know, should I, you know, do this or do that? And I'll, I'll give you some advice, biblically, if it's there. Amen. But, there are times where I'm going to say, you know, that's something I can't really say. It's something you're going to have to pray about. And uh, Johnny and Jenny, you know, moving on, making decisions. What, what do I do next? <laughs> don't ask me. <laughs> I don't want that pressure. And I tell you what to do and it flies in your face later, you're going to blame me. <laughs> but that's what people want. We get the will of God from the what? Word of God. And I think it's just a catchy little phrase. You get the will of God from the Word of God. Amen. What is a sign that we are not walking in the Spirit? It's in the text we're reading. Self-centeredness. You see, if you're walking in the Spirit, you crucify the flesh. If you're not walking in the Spirit, it's all about you. Amen. And people talk about where, where they go to church and they'll answer and say, I just, I, I just felt comfortable there and, and they got the best coffee. Have you ever had their coffee? And, and you know, it's me, 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 me. The music was wonderful. And they, the, one of the last things people will tell you is, man, the preaching. That's one of the last things people will tell you when they talk about the, choosing the church they go to. I hope you enjoy all of us. I mean, you know, you're all wonderful people. I hope you enjoy coming here and hanging out. I hope you enjoy the coffee. But it ought to be, and not about the, I didn't say preacher. Preaching. It's whether it's Greg up here or John up here or whoever's up here, it's the preaching. Amen. Not the preacher. Amen. And that's what, it, the opposite of self-centeredness is when you're here for the preaching. But the majority of churches, and that's their agenda, folks. They're taught if you want to reach people, you have to reach people's felt needs. What's that mean? That means you're catering to a bunch of narcissists. You're catering to a bunch of self-centered people. A bunch of self, self, self people who need, 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 and you try to figure out a way to make them feel like all those needs are being met. It's a disaster. It's been a disaster. Amen. Folks, that's why the churches are dead. Amen. They've got the wrong agenda. And it's not just the preacher to blame. The Bible says that they shall gather to themselves teachers. Heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. It's the people who are doing the heaping. Amen. I mean, those false preachers and teachers are going to answer too. But listen, we've got to wake up to the fact that it isn't just the Benny Hens out there to blame. It's all the butts and the pews at Benny's church. Amen. 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 Look at it says in verse 26. Read it again. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Now, it's just like what happened this morning. We were talking about Johnny and Jenny. We want to be an encouragement to young people and everything, but you notice we didn't take it too seriously. And, you know, but you go to some of these churches, and man, I mean, they put on a big 
hoopla, a big show for worldly achievements and that sort of thing. The only, you know the reason why we're celebrating Johnny and Jenny? Because they're living for the Lord. And they're doing what they think the Lord wants them to do so that they can be what God wants them to be and do what God wants them to do. And we celebrate that. They could be graduating with some high degree with honors and, and have a job making, you know, starting at 150000 a year. And if they're not living for the Lord, I'm not celebrating that. Amen. That's vainglory. You can achieve things in life and it's a total waste of your time. If the achievements you have in this life aren't for the glory of God, it's a waste. Yes. Amen. No real Bible teacher is in the ministry for that. Vainglory. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's why our website, I could have had, by the way, our website isn't pastorgregmiller.com. Now, and there might be some people who do that and they're just so that people can find their website, but the one, a lot of the ones I see, it's it's... You go to the website and you find out who it's all about. PastorGregMiller.com And then your page comes up and it's <laughs> My face. And then they have those rotating pictures. So it goes from It's all me. You know? And you go to those websites and that's what you see. It's all about the preacher. You only find Jesus with a magnifying glass. You hit control plus to make the screen bigger and looking for Jesus. He's not there. But Jenny, Jimmy and B Benny and Paula and all them, they're there all over the place. We, Jenny went to a website this week, couldn't find the name of Jesus in the website. Church website. Couldn't even find the name of Jesus. And no repentance. Nothing about sins. It was like, come in here and just be a part of our inclusive and affirming Baptist church. Yeah. So a real Bible teacher isn't in it for vain glory. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Here's a parable for ministry. I want you to see this. Watch this. And it's big rock thing is stop the big rock big boulder from destroying the entire city <laughs> and he happens to knock over one little building and now the entire village is attacking him and he's like okay well then you can take care of it <laughs> and the boulder crushes the entire that's that's a a parable for ministry that and while I'm talking I'll show it again so you can see it Pastors spend their lives, spend themselves, even neglect their own families and things at times for the flock. And all they can do is complain because something doesn't go right. And then they start knifing him in the back. And when he leaves and that church is destroyed because they didn't appreciate the minister and the ministry that was there. And i got to tell you, 25 years of ministry, a lot of years of ministry, that's what I felt like. There's a, there's a church I pastored and the denomination didn't like the fact that they were afraid that that church was becoming too big and they were afraid that I was in it for vainglory even though I wasn't. Wasn't promoting Greg Miller. We grew up to 185 people on Sunday mornings. Things were busting. So they sent spies. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. They, but they actually sent spies from the headquarters. Didn't, and and they, they went back and said, you know, we didn't see anything wrong. And they found this lady who was a schizophrenic who accused me of preaching crazy doctrine. I was preaching that the King James Bible is an infallible Word of God. I was preaching that once you're saved, you don't lose your salvation. I was preaching that Jesus could rapture us out of here at any moment. And I was preaching that at the end of the tribulation, Jesus was going to establish a thousand year reign where we will be glorified and rule and reign with Him. Strange doctrine! They literally sat there at a table and accused me of that. I said, guilty as charged. What am I going to say? And so they kicked Greg out. Said, if you showed up here next week, we'd have you physically removed by the police and we'll lock the doors. That was when the, all my girls were babies. 
So I abided by what they wanted to do. I stayed away. That church doesn't even exist. And it was dead within a year. Wow. Went from 185. And it's not Greg Miller. It's that I was there preaching the Word and they didn't want that. They wanted somebody who would be denominational. They didn't want somebody who would be about the book. They wanted somebody who would be about the denomination. So they found somebody about the denomination and killed it. So I was like that... And I was like, well, if I can't go stab me in the back, I gotta get out of the way. I don't even know, to be honest with you. At some point, after getting knifed in the back for so long, a pastor just has to move and let the rock roll. Amen. 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 <laughs> to walk in the spirit is to be what? Selfless. Selfless. Not Selfish. You know, just look at yourself. Are you selfless or selfish? That's your answer if you're walking in the Spirit. Today's professing evangelical church is apostate worshipers of self. And all you have to do is a little research and you'll find that out. This is just the latest thing. Now you can go to church and while the preacher's preaching, you can get a tattoo. And, and uh, there are other things going on. Uh, other churches have other things where you go and while the preacher's preaching, you know, there's all this crazy stuff going on. And uh, I, I, didn't, I don't have it here, but you go online. Uh, we, we uploaded the Hillsong uh, Christmas program. And the Silent Night, and the woman singing it, it looked like uh, Taylor Swift, dressed like Taylor Swift, dancing, shaking it like Taylor Swift, and singing Silent Night like she's a stripper. Hillsong. You can see it on our website. Well, when self is God, that's what happens. Amen. When all these people back here are being placated as self-worshippers, this guy believes his ministry is to meet their felt needs rather than to preach the book. That's what's going to happen. This Laodicean generation is about taking not about giving. Yeah. Amen. It's not just because... Listen, I always tell everybody, I don't have to plan uh, what I'm going to preach. We go through the books. Amen. And we're right here in Galatians, and here we are this Christmas season, which is supposed to be about giving. And from the Friday after Thanksgiving onward, the majority of people, it's about getting. Yep. Amen. And if you think those people... At, fighting on Black Friday, if it's about them giving to other people, that's, that's the exception. The rule is they're just there for a deal. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they want to get, 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 get. So what do we do? Well, most churches are pathetic. We don't close our church down. Amen? Amen. And the same thing's true about Christmas. If you have Christmas with your family, keep doing it right. right. You don't just stop doing things because the world... Does what they, they're the world. They're going to do it wrong. The church is now, the world is in the church now. They're going to do it wrong. But we continue to do it right. Mm -hmm. We continue to do it biblically. Amen. And that's what you do with your family. Don't allow your home to be invaded by the world any more than allowing this church to be invaded by the world. Amen. Jesus said this in Acts 20 35. Acts 20 35. You ought to mark it in your Bible. I have showed you all things. How that so laboring you ought to support the weak. And this is Paul talking here. And he says, And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. Now Paul's going to quote Jesus. How he said, read it, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Ho ho! Ho ho ho! Yeah! Words of Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And it's not just talking about holidays and birthdays. It's talking about 365 and one quarter days a year. Amen. 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 We should just always be looking for ways to give. And, I, and no tightwad, I'm not talking about your checkbook. Everybody, as soon as you start talking about giving, people start getting it. And I'm not even talking to anybody in this building. I just get it from... I had somebody... 
last two, two weeks ago I was teaching and I mentioned there was something else. I made a, I, one of the videos I made for the internet, and I mentioned um, the thing about tithing in, in Genesis chapter 14. It's there. So I didn't skip it. So I talked, what's it mean? And I'm not going to get into it right now. Go watch the video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but somebody said, you had me up to the point you said that, and then you lost me and called me a shill. What's that? Just means I'm out for money. You know what? That person is pathetic. Amen. The Word of God was said it. I was just teaching it. He's a tightwad. Jesus doesn't mean anything to him. I don't preach. I don't, I, don't, I don't try to get your money out of you, but I'm here to tell you, everyone here today, if you think giving Jesus a little bit of your money is too much to ask, you're pathetic. Amen. The problem isn't giving money to Bible-believing churches. The problem is pathetic Christians giving to crooks because those crooks say, if you give your money to me, you'll get rich. Self, self, self. They're, even their giving is for selfish reasons. Amen. If you give money here, it's going to go into the ministry. Amen. I'm not going to Gucci. <laughs> Taking the money and run. You can tell by the way I'm dressed, I don't spend a lot of money on clothing anyway. But it certainly wouldn't come from the gifts given to the ministry. Amen. And when you find, and I don't, you don't even, I'm, again, not Greg Miller, I'm just saying if you find a good ministry you can trust and God's blessed you, you ought to be supporting that ministry. Amen. And we've got some people who support this ministry, and I just want that said. But the reason you give isn't to get. But you are more blessed by giving than just to sit back and want to always be receiving. Right. Amen. Amen. Those walking in the Spirit are less likely to be disappointed when not getting things. Amen. You say, I, you know, some people just can't handle loss. Why? Because they're always thinking about what they get, 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 get. But those people who are in the Spirit and not worried about getting, 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 then when they don't get, they're not as disappointed. Amen. It's kind of the power of negative thinking, amen? <laughs> but it's true. If your mind is all about, I want to serve, I want to do stuff for other people, and I want this, and then something doesn't fall just right for you, you're like, oh well, where, where can I give? Where can I? It doesn't even phase you. Their focus is on giving, not getting, and that's why they can endure when they don't get it. Amen. And then when you do get it, you're like, wow! Some of the praise reports here, other people are like, that's no big deal. Well, it's a big deal if you're not always thinking about yourself and always wanting, and then you get something, you're like, praise the Lord, I didn't even ask for that. Amen. <laughs> and when a church family are walking in the Spirit, you don't have to worry about the trouble from folks Amen. provoking one another, envying one another. Do you see how that worked? Praise the Lord. Those who have crucified the flesh aren't about me, me, me. And they're always wanting to give, give, give. And you don't have to worry about the provoking one another and envying one another. Right. It's the exact opposite of what ought to be. You provoking one another, envying. In a church, church family, that's the opposite of what ought to be. Verse 13 in chapter 5, just to review, says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love serve one another. Amen. That's what liberty should result in. 1 John 3.16 Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. That's just, an, I say this, it's supernatural. I was going to say it's the natural result, but it's actually supernatural. It don't happen without the Holy Spirit. And within, you're walking in the Spirit, all this is just supernatural. But it's normal. It should be typical of those walking in the Spirit. And that's it. That's the message. It's, a, it's that simple. And, and I, I don't have to stand up here and start getting, okay, it's close time, let's get the invitation. Martha, you play something on the organ. And we go, oh, people, you need to, oh, and start manipulating you emotionally. 
You know what, folks? You need to get to where you just you heard the word of God this morning. Amen. You don't. You shouldn't need somebody to emotionally pull on you. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit just spoke to you this morning. Amen. Amen. Some of you haven't been really walking in the Spirit, and you spend too much time worrying about self. Yeah. If that's you, there's one thing to do: repent. You say, Lord, I, that's wrong of me. I'm, I'm going to allow you to transform me. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to get in your word. I'm going to pray the way I ought to. I'm going to, I'm going to think about others. Think about the lost. Think about those that are saved that need something that you can provide. Sometimes it's just a phone call. Sometimes it's a letter. Sometimes it's an email. Sometimes it's a visit. doesn't cost you anything. And there's sometimes you just have something lay around the house you can help somebody with. Whatever it is. I'll leave it between you and the Lord. He'll, he'll tell you. Amen. But the details are between you and the Lord. But the general truth is, all of us, give. Have that attitude. Have that spirit of give. Give. And for His glory. Amen. You don't give and then announce it to the world. I just did something that is amazing. I mean, if you want to see somebody walking in the Spirit. No. The book of Proverbs says you let somebody else toot your horn. Amen? Amen. That was a good horn, Martha. That was good. Do what you should do, and He will lift you up. Amen. You don't have to provide your own propaganda, your own media circus. Amen. Amen. That's it. In the modern vernacular, don't toot your own horn. Uh -huh. Amen. White houses don't toot, they just shine. Amen. Did you hear that? That's it. Lighthouses don't toot, they just shine. In order to be a lighthouse. Amen. Good stuff. Stand if you would and let's pray. Father, is a just a tremendous word that you gave us this morning. Yes. Amen. And Lord, I just thank you for those who love your word and have shown up here this morning because they want to hear the word of God. Yes. And I thank you for the new birth and all those who are here this morning having been born again, who have your spirit in them yes. and receiving the word, then your Holy Spirit can make application for each person in this room right down to the detail if we just let them. We can think in our lives, we can think of exact uh, moments where we've just failed to be as giving as we ought to be. Areas of our lives where we're just not as giving as we ought to be. Lord, help us all to crucify the flesh if we haven't done so. There are areas in our lives maybe we're holding on to. Help, Give us wisdom, Lord to know because there's some of those areas that we're not real sure of this is really something that we need to crucify or maybe just modify. Sometimes it's just the amount of time we spend on certain things. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing, but we're just spending too much time on it. Or we just it's too important to us. And we need to have a little more balance. Help us, Lord, each one of us. I, I'm so thankful that I'm not even supposed to try to do that for anybody but Greg Miller. And I pray for everyone here to be, be able to have that kind of relationship, personal relationship with you. For solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.